it's spooky season and in this video we're doing another episode of can i make it for cheaper but we're doing it halloween style Ooh. so grab your candies and cauldrons because we're duping some expensive halloween decor for less yeah, hopefully Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Halloween is in the air, and as a witchy person myself, I do love this time of year. The decor is perfection, and I genuinely think it's getting better and better every year. Honestly, I have to physically stop myself from buying everything in the stores because if I do, my wallet is gonna start looking like this guy. Empty. Hey! <laughs> Cause it ain't cheap! So I thought it would be fun to try and recreate some of the expensive Halloween pieces, but dupe it on a dime in a series that I like to call, Can I Make It For Cheaper? The Halloween Edition. This is a series where I take highly priced decor items and find a DIY solution to dupe it in a high quality way and hopefully for one third of the price. At the end, we will do a summary of the cost to really evaluate if I could in fact make it for cheaper. Maybe I can, maybe I can't, but that is what this series is meant to find out. Can we create magic with with these bad boys and maybe a little extra magic in the air. <laughs> so with that said, let's get into this spooky magical episode. I don't know, roll the tape. All right, Anthropology, you're up first on the DIY chopping block. For our first Halloween inspired, can I make it for cheaper? We're focusing on the super dark, super elegant faux trailing wreath in black. While this product is currently sold out for good reason, it is valued at $118 US. Over here in Monopoly Money World, that would be $160 Canadian. I am in love with this wreath. I just love how like dark and spooky it looks. I like that it's just, it's very simple. I gotta say like $118 isn't that shocking of a price, especially considering that this is faux. Anything faux just costs way more money and it's quite full. I mean, just looking at this, what's the diameter on this? It's 24 inches. I mean, that's pretty big. You're getting a really great wreath. So. I actually don't think that this price is like crazy by any means, but I don't know. I just have this weird thing about wreaths because like I'll make one, I'll put one up, but then next year I don't feel as connected to it. So I'm constantly putting up new wreaths. So for me, I would definitely rather go the DIY route. I'm actually really excited to DIY this, but I will say I do have some concerns that I can actually make this for cheaper. I mean, I did some research to try to find some kind of faux trailing pieces that I could make into a wreath and like each of them were probably $75 for four feet and uh, you do the math we'd probably need about maybe four or five of them just to make it that full so I'm not feeling very optimistic that uh, we can do this in a faux way but I think if we try to go a more realistic route um, I think we can get there so what do you say let's see if we can make it for cheaper all right, so to start my dark trailing wreath, I recently purchased a secondhand wreath at the thrift store for $8.99. It was the right size and the bulkiness of it was giving me a good base to get started. I also needed black wire and super glue with an accelerator because I'm impatient and uh, it was time to start putting this bad boy together. So like I mentioned, sourcing faux greenery for this wreath was going to be really pricey. So I went on a mission to find a real juniper tree and try to match the wreath look. N no, really, I went to visit my mom in the country and we scoured her back fields. The dogs came too. But not to worry because I only took from a tree that was already on its last legs. Jumpin' juniper, oh, we got our supplies. I didn't know what tree type the wreath was mimicking, but juniper definitely looked the closest in my opinion, and I could access it in our Canadian landscape, so juniper for the win. To get this started, I just started layering each piece and securing the branches to the wreath with my black wire. The original inspo was, well, quite full, so we had many layers to make up. So I noticed that our inspiration piece had the branches or greenery, I don't know what we're gonna call it. In this case, either way, the wreath branches, <laughs> 
we're moving kind of downward to give it that trailing look. So I sort of just cheated a little and started creating this look with smaller offcuts and then just glued them into specific places so that they would hang the right way. When I was finally happy with the look, I took my green wreath outside and gave it the black pit of despair makeover it has been waiting for. Ooh, look at all that dark spooky goodness going down. That matte black was perfection. And I gotta say, my dark witchy side was feeling mighty satisfied right now. Now all I had to do was just let it dry and then display it in my home. And here we are, friends, the trailing wreath anthro dupe. Okay, so it doesn't look exactly like the original, but honestly, this still carries that same spooky essence and vibe, and I equally love my version. It's dark, it's elegant, and it is packed with Halloween spirit. But speaking of spirit, in spirit of this series, let's talk the real cost. As a reminder, the Anthro version was a high-end value of $118 US. Converted to Canadian in the current dollar, that would be $160. Pulling out my DIY cost calculator, let's tally this project up. With all the materials I used, minus the tools, this project cost me a total of $42.87, which means I saved a total of $117 by making it myself. Now that's a spend that won't take your wallet to the grave. <laughs> All right, moving on. Up next, West Elm, you're on the DIY chopping block for our next Halloween inspired Can I Make It For Cheaper? We're focusing on the super snaky, gold dipped, Slytherin inspired metal snake candle holder. Currently valued at $99 US or $149 Canadian. I think we can try and do better. I just think this is brilliant. I love the way that the snake kind of wraps around the votive. I think the color is perfection. I kind of like that I could probably put something like this into my apothecary cabinet afterwards or, you know, like style it around there and it would just work all throughout any season. So that's why I was really drawn to wanting to recreate this in some way, shape or form. Honestly, I got really excited when I saw this. So I'm thinking let's go make this for cheaper, shall we? To get this project started, I first found a large glass cylinder candle holder at the thrift store for $4.49. To create my snake, I went with epoxy sculpt. It's a little more expensive than going with an average clay, which could have worked as well in this situation, but I just find epoxy sculpt is way easier to work with and just less temperamental in the drawing portion. Now, epoxy sculpt comes with a part A and part B that needs to be mixed really well together. So I put my sickening hand muscles to work and just mixed up a big old chunk. Then it was time to sculpt out my snaky snake. Now to map out the shape, I used tin foil to lay out the general body form and size and then just simply started wrapping this around my glass cylinder. The head was a little more challenging as it turns and comes off the vase as if it had been taunted and now it's turning to its prey. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but uh, to make this happen, I needed to add more structure into that neck. So using an 18 gauge wire that I kind of doubled up a few times, I kind of molded it into my neck shape and then added my foil around it. Now to keep it in place, I was adding a little glue and accelerator. So my dry time was three seconds, not 30. I'm impatient, okay? So I was feeling pretty good about all of it until I realized that my plan to simply sculpt around my tin foil on the glass <laughs> wasn't going to work. I mean, it's glass, so you would just see the tin foil on the inside. Duh, Danny. I guess you could say my plan was foiled. <laughs> I tore the thing off and just tried to remove as much tin foil on the glass as I could. But don't worry friends, I did take some goo gone and a sharp blade to that later on and that glue came right off. So I had to pivot my plan instead. My challenge was to be able to build this out and let it dry in the shape and spot that I needed. So I decided the only way to keep the snake in that shape placement that I wanted was to create a rig for it to sit on. So I did that with popsicle sticks and glue. Finally, it was time to start sculpting, so I got to work wrapping and forming the modeling compound around the foil and just kind of working it in the connection points with a little water. And now, I wasn't being too picky on the look right now as I could work that out later. My goal was to just get this compound on. I was a little worried that the head was gonna pack some extra weight with the extra pounds and uh, I was correct, so I put another rig in place just to keep the head where I wanted it. 
Sculpting the face out was really fun and I just kind of used some of my clay tools to create dents in the body to give it that snaky texture, much like in our inspiration piece. After 24 hours, our snake hardened up so well and it was time to transform this into the faux metal it wanted to be. So using a brush metal gold paint, I simply just went to town covering the entire body. To bring out the details in the snake and just kind of give it a more realistic metal look, I added drops of black acrylic ink and wiped it into all the little crevasses of the snake skin. I just love that it brings out all the features. It looks so good. Then to just really finish it off, I took that same gold paint and using a fan brush I just dry brushed a layer of gold on top. Once that dried it was finally time to remove all of my rigs. I was feeling a little nervous but excited to see what happens. So to finish Mr. Snake off, I added a light layer of satin clear finish. This was just to protect the paint from scratching, but that satin was going to give it that metal sheen just to make it feel much more realistic. And once that dried up, it was finally time to bring this piece together, securing our glass phase in place around our snake body. I just kind of carefully glued the body at certain connection points to ensure it wouldn't move. And honestly, that was it. I think it looks just like the inspiration, and if not, maybe I just kind of made it my own a little bit, but it definitely captures the essence of the original, and it made one heck of a centerpiece on my table. But in spirit of this series, let's talk the real cost. As a reminder, the West Elm version was sitting at $149 Canadian. Pulling out my DIY cost calculator, let's tally this project up. With all the materials I used, minus the tools, this project cost me a total of $117.90. Cents, which means I saved a total of $31 by making it myself. But if I hadn't used the expensive epoxy sculpt and just used a clay instead, we could have been looking at a save of 70 buckaroos. It's not a crazy saving, but I think the process to create this was so much fun. And as a person who loves to just get creative, the end product was so good. So I will take this one as a DIY win nonetheless. Moving on, up next, Anthro, you're back on the block. For our next Halloween-inspired Can I Make It For Cheaper, we're focusing on the Joanna Butchahan Capiz Shell Skull. Again, out of stock, but usually valued at $98 US. Converted into my Monopoly money, that's $146 Canadian. I'm gonna be completely honest. I love this pearlescent skull, but I will not pay $98 for it. I cannot justify that by any means. And to be honest, I really do think that this would be fun to DIY. Even if I couldn't do it for cheaper, I think I would still do this DIY because I just think it's fun and it looks cool. So I really feel excited to try to recreate this in some way, shape or form. And I think we can do it and I'm excited to do it. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it but I have a few ways that I think I can get this look so we're gonna try it two ways maybe three I don't know but I definitely have two ways that I want to try it and we'll see which one turns out best I was also kind of thinking that it would be fun to kind of make this our own I've seen a lot of those skulls out there that have the bouquets that sit on top of it so you kind of turn it into like a flower planter I would love it if we could kind of mold these two ideas together and create some kind of beautiful pearlescent skull bouquet flower centerpiece for Halloween and maybe the seasons beyond. So what do you say? Are you with me? Let's go make some pearlescent skulls, shall we? <laughs> To get started on our pearlescent skulls, well, we needed skulls, so I picked up these bony guys from my local dollar store. I first wanted to give the surface a good sanding, just roughing it up to make it less shiny. I also didn't want the jaws to move, so I used my usual super glue to hold it in place and just stuff some paper towel wads in behind the jaw to help fill in the gaps. Now, as I mentioned, one of these skulls were going to be turned into a flower display, so I got my blade and we started brain surgery. <laughs> Now looking at the inspiration piece, it's very textured and you can kind of see the veining from the shells. And I really just wanted to bring this look into mind. So I thought a great base would be using my trusty friend, Mr. Drywall Compound. So I covered up both skulls in this paste. 
Once they were fully dried, I sanded both skulls down, just smoothing it out a little bit, removing some of the harder textures. Now I talked about trying different techniques to get the desired look. So the first technique was using silver metal leaf sheets and metal leaf adhesive, which would take the shape of the drywall compound underneath, but also just add a little bit of additional veining in the ripples of the paper. It's a very dainty process, but the end result is always so satisfying. So while that was drying away, I moved on to my next idea. For the second skull, I wanted to try an iridescent epoxy pour on top, but before I could do that, I wanted to give the skull base a nice white iridescent acrylic paint just to kind of help that pour shine a little bit more underneath. So I ended up giving my skull about two layers of this iridescent paint because it is quite thin, but overall I was really happy with this direction. And then once it was dry, it was time to epoxy. Mixing up my part A, part B resin, I then added a white iridescent mica powder to it that was going to give our pour that beautiful iridescent sheen we were going for. Is that not the most satisfying thing to watch or what? So that was going to need a full 24 hours to dry. So the next day it was finally time to bring our two skulls together. Coming back to our foiled skull, the last step was to cover the entire thing with the same white iridescent paint, which is quite thin, but that was exactly what I wanted. So that the shine from the foil would still come through along with the veining we created with the foil technique. Honestly, this skull really took shape and the result of this one was, I think, super successful. And when that had fully dried up, it was finally time to finish off our flower head skull. I found these lovely faux flowers at my local craft store on sale, may I add, buy one get one free. And I simply stuffed the inside of the skull with floral foam bricks and then just arranged my flowers into the foam. And then just to finish off my epoxy skull, which was nice and shiny and hard now, I covered the entire thing in that same thin translucent iridescent paint and that was it. Ta-da! My DIY friends, I present the Pearlescent Skull, the Flower Centerpiece Edition. And of course, the Pearlescent Skull, the Epoxy Edition. I mean, all things said, I don't think these turned out too bad. In my opinion, I think the foiling was definitely the way to go over the epoxy. It just, the foiling gave it those brilliant veining lines that kind of mimicked the Capiz shell from the original, but the epoxy version also looked brilliant. I really couldn't pick which one was my favorite if I tried, but I'm so glad that I got the chance to try out both and I'm not gonna lie I'm kind of obsessed with the skull flower bouquet it's so pretty and just such a fun centerpiece for any table but let's talk the real cost as a reminder the anthro version was a high-end value of $98 US converted to Canadian in the current dollar that would be $146 Canadian now pulling out my DIY cost calculator with all the materials I used minus the tools this project cost me a total of of $51.35, giving me a savings of $94. And for the epoxy head version, I spent a total of $59.46, giving me a savings of $86. Some would say we created some pretty cool sculptures. <laughs> Well, dear way friends, that concludes another Can I Make a Foot Cheaper? The Halloween edition. You guys should let me know which one was your favorite. Honestly, if I had to pick, I think my favorite is the snake uh, candle holder. I just think this thing is so cool. It looked so awesome on the table. It makes such a great centerpiece. And I just love these kind of DIYs in my home. Now, as far as creating a pearlescent skull, I think, we achieved our goal. I mean, both versions turned out super awesome and the flowers on top, like just so sweet. I just love this. It creates such a great little centerpiece. It's gonna look so good on my apothecary afterwards and I just love it. I'm also so happy with the way that the wreath turned out. Although it wasn't exactly like the inspo photo, I think it's still 
looks amazing in my front entryway. I love that it's kind of dark and it just brings that vibe that I was looking for, which is just kind of eerie and spooky and it just sets the tone for the Halloween season. You know what I mean? Of course, sending so much love to my Patreon family. If you are looking for a crew of DIY people to root you on, to give you advice or just a place to share all your fun projects, then my Patreon is definitely the place for you. And of course, my friends, as always, stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Happy Halloween! Woo!